it. <laughs> well, we hopefully so. Amen. To our guests, we love you. Can we give our guests a hand? Amen. We thank the Lord for everybody that, that follows us on uh, social media and watches us there on, on the app and all those wonderful places and church online and yes. amen, all those good things. We've got people from all over the world tuning in and, and uh, we have relatives in California that are watching. I have a, uh, I have relatives in uh, Cleveland, Ohio that consider themselves part of this church yeah. um, that watch Amen, and, and they are uh, they are uh, really tuned in to what's going on here, and we thank the Lord for them as well. Um, again, we're going to dive right into this. I'm not going to tarry because I didn't have enough time last week to get through everything, um, but tonight we're going to try our best that you don't uh, get held in here captive for any more than five hours. Okay. And all the guests said, "I'm in the wrong house." <laughs> Amen. Those that know me know we're not going to be here any longer than four hours and 45 minutes. Okay. All right. In the book of Matthew, the uh, 28th chapter, very common, uh, very, um, I say common, it's not common itself, but it is a, a uh, text that is read a lot. The 16th verse, we're going to stop right there or start right there. Amen. Uh, Matthew 28, 16. Then the eleven disciples went into where? Galilee. Into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Some of y'all worship tonight, but some of y'all doubted. Because your, your circumstance tells you something different, doesn't it? I need some help, please. Man. Your, your, your circumstance says that, that life isn't fair. So when you come in, you're like, I've gone through a whole lot and I, I just don't know what to do. And... I don't know how to respond and I don't know how to act and I don't know whether I, I'm going to go through the motions of, of, of worship and go through the motions of prayer and praise but really I don't think God's going to do it for me. That's just where we are. That's just where we are. But how many really want to have enough faith to know? That whenever I talk to God, He hears me. Whenever. Whenever. It doesn't matter. Whenever. Whenever I talk to God, He hears me. I want to be there. I, that's the type of prayer that I want to have. The type of life, prayer life I want to have in God. So it is important that we, we maintain that, that kind of mindset. Make sure we don't just worship, but we worship. And when we come to church, we come in with expectation that God's going to do something for us. All right. Now that's for free because that, has, that really has nothing to do with what I'm going to talk about tonight. Well, it may. All right. Verse 18 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in where? Earth. Earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name. In A-M-E, we're going we're gonna to have a little bit of English class here in the name of the Father and then there's a comma and it says and of the Son comma and of the Holy Ghost the conjunction and means that the same name is applied to all three characters does that make good sense yes. so go ye therefore and teach all nations baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, right? Father's not a name. Son is not a name. And the Holy Ghost is not a name. It is positions. It's positions. It is what He is. 
But the Bible says uh, there's only one name that is given unto man whereby we must be saved. And that name is Jesus. In another place it says his name shall be Emmanuel, meaning God with us. He should be called Emmanuel. His name is Jesus, but Emmanuel means that he is God with us. Verse 20 says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And it concludes with a amen. So be it. Just in case you're confused on what really is going on, we're going to move into Mark. Let's go to Mark, the 16th chapter, verse 14 through 18. Am I going fast enough or slow enough for you? Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. Sat down to eat. And upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which, uh, which had seen him after he was risen. They didn't believe what the disciples' report was. Anybody had anybody tell them about how good God is? They don't believe your report? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, it ain't really real like that. Hmm. It really don't mean that, you know, you know, it, it, it's not about that. And you, you're telling them, no, 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 no. You don't understand what God has done for me. And they're telling you, no, somebody else did that for you. But in reality, you know, it was you that prayed to your God and your God intervened where mom and daddy couldn't intervene, huh? where man couldn't change it. You understand? And so it begins to, to evolve into something just like back then. They, were, they were told him, we just saw Jesus. He is resurrected. Sit down and shut up. And some of y'all would say, well, some of us would be the same way, wouldn't we be? You know, all of a sudden somebody comes and tells you that, that uh, you just saw Jesus. Huh? And they'd be like, you ain't seen no Jesus. Sit down. That I had a vision. You, they say, sit down. You ain't had no vision. When the Bible says, cl cl clearly you will have dreams and you'll have vision. But they're going to tell you, no, you, you, you're delusional. We need to go here and take you to the hospital and get you checked out. Huh? It, it, it's just amazing how man is. But it, it was the same then. They believed not which, on them which had seen he was risen. Next verse. And he said unto them, watch this. Go ye huh, into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now stop, I'm going to stop right there for a second. They didn't believe, he was frustrated because they didn't believe, but his, re his remark was to them or his instruction with them, now go. But, but they didn't hear me. No, no, I said go. But I witnessed to them and they didn't come. No, go. And where do I do that at? Right? Because I'm, I don't have the right to pick and choose. Right? Because he, he says, go ye into all the world and preach what? The gospel to every creature. Now, creature is a, a harsh statement because sometimes we look at people like, I ain't talking to that creature. But you got to make up your mind that you can't have that kind of attitude. All right? I don't care if they look like you, don't look like you. They're rich, they're poor, they're clean, they're dirty, don't matter. They deserve to hear the word of God. He hung on the cross not just for those that look like us, but those that don't look like us. He hung on the cross for those that act like us and those that don't act like us. Yeah, come on. So we can't just pick and choose. We can't just pick and choose. Some of us get caught up into that. We look for people that we can associate the ease with. And sometimes we are so into ourselves, we look for people that are less than us. Because we feel like we got a little bit more going on. They might hear us. But those that have a little bit more than we have, we'll leave them alone because they may not hear us. Huh? I'm not worried about them hearing me. I'm planting a seed. You, you hear what I'm saying? It doesn't matter where I'm planting it. I'm planting a seed. You see. We're making sure that that, that, that word gets out. Y'all stick with me. I don't know what they're doing. Come on, stay up here. We're planting a seed where it needs to be planted. You understand what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. We can't pick and choose for every creature. And verse 16 says, He that believeth, watch this, and, in ba and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Right? Because we have to preach a word to people so that they can understand that you first must believe 
And then you must wash away your sins in that watery grave. Does that make good sense? All right? And if they believe and are baptized, they're going to make it. Or at least they'll, they'll have the tools to make it. But if they don't believe, because baptism without belief is nothing but a hot tub experience. Or in some cases, a cold tub experience. <laughs> you see. If the Bible says that they don't, they will be damned. And that right there is a very harsh and, and, and uh, a word that means that you are going to hell. I know that that just sounds rough, but it is what it is. I didn't say it, Jesus. It's red letter. Come on. Verse 17 says, And these signs shall follow them which believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? Shall they speak with new tongues? For all those that don't believe in speaking in tongues, maybe because you haven't been born again. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Jesus said this. All right? He said, if, if they believe and are baptized, they will be what? Saved. And then he goes on to say, in, in regards to that, that after they have received that, right, they'll lay hands on the sick, and they'll get up. They'll grab hold to Satan and his demonic creatures. And it won't hurt them, serpents. Come on, somebody, stick with me. And if they drink any daily thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they possibly might sometime. They shall recover. We have that much authority and power and we have to stay in that place. And believe that with everything that is in us. <laughs> Uh, are y'all okay with me now? Yes. Come on, somebody. We have to learn to love God with everything and every, everything that is in us and to know that his promises are for us. Stick with me. Right. Stick with me. Some of us are just nosy. Amen. <laughs> if we paid that much attention to God, what would happen? Oh, I'm just saying. Mm, somebody drop something. Everybody here, look. Somebody go out the door. Everybody stop. I'm right here. Look, you better stick in here. All right, so that's Luke. I mean, that was Matthew. Here's Luke. Mark, thank you. Mark, Matthew, Mark. Now we're going to get to Luke. Thank you. Now we got me off chasing y'all's faces running all over the room. Luke 14, 21. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Right? Then the master of the house, being angry, being what? Angry. Said to his servants, go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. Right? And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. Right? Yeah, we told me to do that, and we still got some more room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. So here's what he said. We've got a partial crowd. But I'm not satisfied until the house is filled. So because you you celebrating because we've done what you said and you got a few people. But now he's saying, I need you to go out and get everybody. Now, if we had that kind of mindset, there wouldn't be one pew, one chair. We would have to simulcast in the back room. You hear what I'm saying? Uh, we, would, we, would have to, we would have to go to three or four services because of the great overflow. But we in ourselves have a different mindset. Now, I want to I talk to you just quick, briefly about verse, this verse, in four, verse 14 here. In that parable of the marriage supper of the Lamb, the Master Jesus, is who the Master is, Jesus, was talking to the servants of the church, <laughs> commanding, because you understand there, there is a parallel here. He wasn't just telling you a parable just so you can just say, ooh, what a great story. He was comparing it to his people to, under, to let them understand what was going on. Jesus is speaking to the church here. Go bid uh, people to come unto the wedding feast. Because it's not my will that any should perish. I want everybody to come in. They will come in. Right away they began, to, people that the first, the first group, we didn't read that part, but the first group, when they began to go out, they began to come up with excuses. 
I just bought some land. I don't, I haven't seen it. I've got some oxen, I haven't seen it. Somebody died, I got to go to a funeral. People always have excuses, right? But we can stop with the excuse and let the excuses freeze us in our tracks. Or we can go back out and say, if they don't want to come, there's somebody that does. Right. Right. Is this making good sense? Yes. Somebody out there really wants what God has. Now watch this. When they began to make those excuses, that was the people on the other side. The people that were being invited. Nowadays, it is the invitor that brings the excuses. The same spirit that was on the invitee is now on the invitor. I asked them to come. They just didn't come. I don't know what to do. You, you understand? I went out last week. I don't need to do it this week. I, I, I called somebody last week. I ain't calling nobody this week. I'm tired of getting the phone hung up on me. I, I, I'm tired of doors being slammed on me. I'm tired of people uh, unfriending me on social media. Because all I talk about is God. Well, what else I got to talk about? Hey, we can talk about the game for a little while. Then you're going to lose me. Just like when I begin to talk about God. I'm going to lose you. I'm talking about how we talk, to, how we communicate with other people. That's what happens, right? It's just going to happen. But eventually, there will be a cohesion and we'll come together and somebody's life will change. The bottom line is, I can't keep giving God excuses on why I'm not doing what he said. Did you go out? Well, no, not this time. Right? Now, here's a question for us tonight. Does our apathy anger God? Does our apathy anger God? What do you think? Does our complacency, I, you know, I'm not really, I'm saved and now I'm okay. I got my favorite pew seat and I'm good. Now some of y'all would like to rather be in the warmer section. Amen. But, but am I, that, am I, that apathy, do I, I'm just going through the motion now. Does it anger God? What is very sad uh, in verse 24, it says, For I say unto you that none of these men's, men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. People who make excuses will never be in the marriage supper. Whether you're invitee or invitor. You won't make it. Uh, one of the words that we read in this is called preach. By the way, we are in the apostolic Pentecostal principles. We are still in verse, I mean, excuse me, verse. We are still in um, uh, the principle number, the, we are in six, part six of the series, um, different principle number. All right. Preach is a word that you've heard. The word for preach is, or proclaim in the Greek New Testament is kerios. Can you say that? Kerioso. 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 It is used 32 times in the gospel. But about half of these are parallel occurrences within the synoptic gospel. So in the synoptic gospels. Synoptic means similar or same. Synoptic means? Good. Those are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John is not part of the synoptic gospel, okay? Gospels, okay? Did not make him less than. His word was just a little bit more. He dealt with the deity of Christ more than the others, okay? Proclaim, which is the other word which is used in the scriptures is a complementary to more specific term or to like words like evangelize or the phrase announce the good news, go and tell the good news, which contains within its meaning the objects that is announced or proclaimed the good news. However, usually when proclaim carioso is used uh, the context includes its object, which in the majority of instances is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, in other words, when it said preach, it was the action of preaching. Proclaim is what we're proclaiming when we're preaching. 
which is what? The gospel. Okay? Does that, does that make good sense? Why y'all give me all that stuff? I, that's, I don't need all that. Well, you don't, but it's good to, to know. All right? You can walk around and just say, I just know Acts 2.38. John 3 and 5, and you can be good. John 3, 16, for you football fans. You know, you can just walk around and just know that. And think you got it made. Because I'm just right there, all right? All right, we're going we're gonna to dive right back into here. Some of this is going to be repetitive sounding to you, but I want you to know these things, okay? Isaiah 52 and 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that uh, publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Now what it's saying here is your feet are beautiful. Now we talk about the, the, how beautiful are the feet of the man that preaches the word of God or preaches or the gospel, right? But also for people who go out and spread the word. All right, because sometimes we, we, get, we get it all mixed up and we think the preacher is just the man behind the pulpit, right? How many proclaim the gospel? How many of you proclaim it to your family? How many of you proclaim, I'm not hearing no answers. How many proclaim it on your job? Come on. Now there's a lot of people with the little uh, WWJD signs on the back of their cars. They're not proclaiming Jesus. Right? And I'm not saying all of them, but many of them aren't because you can drive up next to them and listen to what they listen on the radio and they ain't got nothing to do with Jesus. Uh, you, can, you can be around folk and they're doing all manners of things. Fingers are going up. They shouldn't go up. Huh? And they WWJD. Well, what would Jesus do? He would tell you to repent before you bust hell wide open. That's what he would do. You see, but we have to proclaim it. Now, we don't just proclaim it with our lip service. That's, that's the misnomer. We proclaim it in our lifestyle. Right? We proclaim Jesus in everything that we do. I, 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 tell, the, I tell the young ministers years ago, and, and, and those that are in leadership, you don't check out a ministry. You don't have a clock in to ministry and clock out a ministry. When you're in, you're in. It's like being jumped into a gang. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just clock out. You're on ministry. You're on call 24-7. Wherever you're at, you are a living epistle, read of all men. You are there for people to see the proclamation that Jesus saves. The carnal church has a Sunday saint mentality. Or while I'm around church folk, I act churchy. But when I walk out the door... It's a total different person that you're going to run into. Does that make good sense? Huh? So the real church has to say, I've got to draw a line in the ground and say, no, I'm saved in the church and out of the church. When the pastor are looking, when the saints are looking, and when they're not looking. Huh? Check my Facebook page, would you? I'm not afraid. You know what I'm saying? We have to be in a place like that. I'm not afraid of what everybody else is trying to do. I know who I am. I know what I'm trying to do. And I have to proclaim this thing everywhere I go. Now, the enemy speaks loud and screams and hollers and puts on all kind of stuff. So we, the people of God, have to walk like Jesus did. He says, by love and kindness, haven't I drawn you? We don't go out and, and, and Bible whip people. We don't do that. There's a group out there now just, just, just so corrupt. They're going out doing that. Trying, and all they do is just get louder and, and, and think the louder they get, the more anointed they are. That, that ain't anointing. Yeah. Huh? That's just you speaking some noise trying to sway people into some carnality. Right? right? What does the word say? Let's stick to the word. Quit trying to venture off into other areas. Live the life. Proclaim what? The gospel. What are we supposed to preach? The gospel. What is the gospel? The good news. What is the good news? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. How is that, how is that put into action? Death, burial, and resurrection is nothing, nothing less than repentance, baptism, and being filled with the Holy Ghost. It is the same thing. So what do we preach? We preach that. Who, who, who does it? Jesus does it. So we preach in the name of Jesus. Everything we do is in the name of Jesus. Are you Jesus only? Well, you look like that's a carnal thought. Right? There's one name, and that name is Jesus. Right? Anything I ask of the Father, he said, ask in my name. So I've got to ask it in Jesus' name. Why are you mad at me? 
<laughs> you, know, you, you don't need to do all that. Stop praying over your food. You're embarrassing me. And some of y'all need to quit bowing your head and, and whispering your prayer in public. <laughs> Yeah, because your proclamation might be the person next to you that was about to commit suicide and now all of a sudden they see you praying and living us and, and smiling and saying I wish I could be happy like you what did it take for you to get happy like that and you can say let me talk to you about Jesus <laughs> see things can change in a heartbeat you can't be ashamed of this thing. You got to walk with it with, with authority. You got to know that what you're proclaiming is real. In other words, you got to know your word, first of all. So you're not easily swayed and, and tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Trust me, there's some wind that moved into this city lately. I've had three people, minimum three people, come to me about some garbage being preached out there. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm, and, and, and so far, as far as I know, none of them fell for it. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. But, but my point is this. If you know your word and they start talking something that don't make no sense, hey, now you, psst, stop. <laughs> Let me tell you about Jesus. No, I don't want to hear about that. Bye. My conversation's over. Because we're not going, we're not going to battle about how loud you can get. Let me prove my point. Let me, who told you that? You see. So anyway, I don't, I don't want to spend, I don't waste my time on other people's false doctrine. And we're going to get back into the word. All right. In the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter, verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Is that awesome? Ever and ever. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Now, what did he say? Turn. Watch that. Turn. Listen to this right now. Turn. Many. Turn. What does that mean? Help them change their direction. Bring them out of sin. Turn them from a life leading to hell to a life that's leading to what? Righteousness. Those that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. You will be rewarded. The old folks said you're going to get a star in your crown for the souls that you win for God. We don't do this just to do it. I don't just live this life just to live it. It's not me and my foreign no more. I'm trying to win the battle. I'm on the battlefield for the Lord. You see? Daniel 12 and 3. You just did that, right? <laughs> Proverbs 11 and 30. Proverbs 11 and 30. The fruit of the righteousness is the tree of life. And he that what? Winneth souls is wise. Amen. See, y'all just think people wise because they got gray hair. <laughs> the Bible says this is wisdom. Glory to God. I know some dummies with gray hair though. <laughs> you understand? But soul winners... It's plain. You, you've got some wisdom. You're utilizing wisdom to win them. Right? Right? Because the enemy is, is cunning and crafty. Huh? And that's what he is. He dresses up in sheep's clothing, but inside he's a, what, a ravaging lion, a raving lion, and, and he is a lying lion. Right? And, 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 and good at it. And so we have to be what? Wise. We have to look at the, we, we, we observe the situation and we feel the Holy Ghost said, go now. I, I'm not going to wait and, and argue with the Holy Ghost now. I don't feel like going right now. Don't you know I'm in the middle of my cheeseburger? No, go now. Well, I'm going to miss the Super Bowl. Go now. Why are you at the Super Bowl when it's Sunday? I'm just saying, go now. Go now. Move now. Right? You got, to, you got to be wise. You got to be wise in it. You also can't, like I said before, you can't Bible beat people and expect them to come to church. Here's another one, people. Listen to me on this carefully because we don't really have this problem, but sometimes we get frustrated. Have you ever gotten mad at somebody at church? Don't raise y'all's hands. 
If you ever get frustrated with somebody in the, in the church that you go with, somebody you don't, I don't, I don't even want to talk to them. Don't, don't raise hands. I, I, I already see it in your faces. <laughs> they on my nerves. They, they, they getting on my nerves. They bugging me. And when they walk in, I just want to knock them out. I don't, definitely don't raise your hand on that one. <laughs> Let brotherly love continue. We're going to pray for everybody in this building. Right? But why would you talk to your unsaved family about it? Oh. Oh. And then try to invite them next week after you done got over it. Yes, come on, That's right. That's right. That's right. Stuff you don't like at church, most of it is because of immaturity. You're just not there yet. Can I help somebody? Y'all pray too much. No, you're just not praying. You still a babe, you still eating, you drinking milk, you quit trying to think you owe me, and you just getting mad about everything that happens. Oh, we just do too much. We just do, no, 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 no. Quit talking like that and say, well, you know what? When I was a kid, right, I wanted to walk. But before I could walk, I had to learn to crawl. Now, if you watch babies, when they crawl it, they think they doing it. They think, they, man, I'm, I, I done went from rolling over to I'm now kicking, I'm moving around, I'm going wherever I want to go. They think they're doing something until they try to walk. And then they... <laughs> <laughs> because they look at you and they say, if they can do it, that must be easy. <laughs> and that's the way the saints are. Sometimes we look at where people are, you don't even know what they've been through. And you think, you thinking that, that oh, that's easy, that's what they're doing. And then, then, then it gets to being feeling too hard for you. <laughs> and then you complain about it. And you talk to the people who aren't saved about it. Well, let me tell you, uh, I'd like to, you know, I invited to our church, but, you know, it's, you know, it's a little bit this, it's a little bit that, you know, I'm going to let you know up front before you go. Now, you should tell them, our church is loud. Our church is loud. We're not going to be, we, we, we are going to worship. We're going to praise him. And, and tonight, was, tonight was relatively quiet night. Yes. Yes. Remember, I think the cold weather didn't get people down. The, ho the happy holidays. Mm -hmm. I say Merry Christmas, but a lot of folks got that happy holiday mindset. Some of y'all checking, counting account. Y'all, y'all spending more time right now on your bank app. <laughs> Man, I need gotta buy that present. Let me see. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I need to go talk to somebody who I used to talk to. They used to get it at a discount. <laughs> uh, y'all not like that. I know. I know y'all not like that anymore. <laughs> Mark 1.14 says this. Now, after the John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. What did he preach? The kingdom of God. All right. And saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe what? The gospel. So watch this. Now I want you to pay. I, I, I rushed through this before. I'm not going to rush through it tonight. Look at, I want you to, to, uh, to dissect the scripture and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is what? At hand. Right. Now let's go back. Let's go back to 14 first before I do that. I don't want to move too fast. Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, right? Kingdom of God, heaven. If you want to get to heaven, the only way you can get to heaven is going the route that will lead you to heaven. That is the only way, and that's the gospel. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The, you know what I'm saying? You must go in at the door. You can't go around it. You can't go under it. You can't climb over it. And if you, try to, if you try to sneak in any other way, the Bible says you're a thief and a robber, and thieves and robbers have their place in the lake of fire. Are y'all okay with me now? So there's no other way to do this. So then let's go back to 15. And it says, and saying, this is what he said. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is readily available. Now it's time for you to repent and believe the gospel. Now watch this. If you don't repent and you don't believe the gospel, where do you think you're going? Right? Because the only way I can get into the kingdom of God is doing it his way. I told y'all this before, and, and, and it's, 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 I just love saying it because it just, it just feels good. But what other God is the door that knocks at the door, who opens the door, who walks through the door, 
while still at the same time still remaining the door. The only way you can get in is with him. You try to come any other way, come on, you can open another door, that door isn't going to lead you where that, where, the, where that door is going to take you. Come on, I love it. You got to preach the gospel. I can't come around. You know what, we, 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 we can do some flowery stuff and preach exciting stuff, Ooh, but it better come back to the gospel. Right? Because if, if all you want is candy huh, and somebody to whisper sweet nothings in your ear, let me help you right now. You in the wrong church, baby. Because if I can't change from what I was to what God wants me to be. <laughs> My Lord. Romans 10, 14, 15. Romans 10, 14th verse. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not heard? Uh, have not believed. I'm sorry, I jumped ahead of myself. Whom they have not believed. How can people in the world call on Jesus who they don't believe in? Now, let me help you out. There's a difference in saying I believe in Jesus and believing in Jesus. Yes. Now, there's a major difference. There's a major difference. There's a lot of people who say, oh, I believe in Jesus. No, you don't. Because if you believed in Jesus, there is a hell that he said you're going to go to and a heaven if you don't get it together. But I believe in Jesus. Mm-hmm. I pray to Jesus all the time. You know, except when you got the blunt on your lip. <laughs> huh? And, and stop blessing your bottle of liquor. God ain't going to help you with that. Pray to come off of it, but quit trying to talk about, oh, Lord, bless this wife. Shut up. I told y'all, this is the wrong church. <laughs> How they call him? They don't believe. They don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe in His saving grace. They don't believe that He's a healer. They don't believe that He's a deliverer. They believe that He's somebody that the preacher talks about, and we're gonna sit in church, do our time, check off that we went to church for fifteen minutes, because you can be in the church and checked out of the church. You understand what I'm saying? You can be sitting on the pew on Facebook. You came to church, but you ain't in church. <laughs> and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Whose fault is it if they haven't heard? Ours. Our fault. They need to hear. Now, whether they listen is a different thing. Right? But it's our job to make sure we tell them there is a God that loves you. There is a God that doesn't care where you are in your life right now, but he's willing to take you from there to where he wants to take you. There is a God that will save you, and there is a God that will deliver you. There is a God that will say, come on, come on, I go back to salvation over and over and over again. There is a God that will heal you. There is a God that will break the chains of your addiction. There is a God that will do that. And if you want to know who his name is, his name is Jesus. He's the only God that is capable of doing that. You've got to proclaim it. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. How are they going to hear? If they, how are they going to believe if they haven't heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Go ahead and nudge your neighbor and say, go ahead, preacher. <laughs> yeah. Now y'all gonna come to me and ask me how to put five points together and put up a put a sermon together. No, 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 baby, you got the gospel. Oh, y'all just go out there and tell them <laughs> the death, burial, and resurrection. Let me tell you what Jesus did for you and for me. And let me tell you what he, how he changed my life. Let me ask you now. Now I'm gonna ask y'all this, and you can you can be honest now if you want to. How many of you had struggles before you got saved? that are no longer struggles. Raise your hand if that's a fact. Come on now. Say, no, no, see, y'all ain't like me. I can lift every finger and every toe and every, and that still not be enough. Yes! He brought me from a mighty long way. You don't think you got something to tell somebody? <laughs> me then, me now. Woo! <laughs> Huh? Come on. I'm trying to help somebody in this place right now. Why you need to be letting somebody know and you think you're not a preacher. You're a preacher every time you tell them. 
I don't care if it's big, 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 big mama. <laughs> they used to whip your tail. You can say, big mama, 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 mama. Let me tell you what Jesus did. Don't bring that Jesus stuff in here. Oh, no, it's happening. It's happening. No, let me tell you. Huh? Check my ashtray. Ain't nothing in it no more. Maybe some change. <laughs> Matter of fact, I believe God will change your change into dollars, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Remember, I couldn't get in, I could never have a good relationship. Look at me now. Come on. Huh? Didn't I see you at the club last night? No, that was the old me. You didn't see me at the club. I was at the church last night. Yes. Praying for the people that I used to be in the club with. Yes. <laughs> I know y'all, y'all. Some of y'all just, just was raised better than I was. I had good family. I just was bad. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me out. I can go back memory lane and tell you right now that I can drive you by the cemetery and see a lot of the guys that I ran with right there. I can drive you by the prison and show you a lot of the guys that are still in there, incarcerated, that I ran with right there. I can drive you by those that are dying of cancer and other diseases they contracted doing the things in this world. Amen. And how God picked me up out of the midst of that. move me out you, you understand <laughs> people really don't believe stuff and, and I get it you know, you know I, I, I don't have that. I wish I had that, that 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 always you know born in a saved house lived you know grew up I, I didn't I didn't grow up that way I grew up secularized I, I grew up carnal I grew up in the world my mind was geared by the world I thought I was a good person while I was jacking you I was a good person you understand? But in reality, when God moved me, out of all the people, why did he choose me? And so when, when you say, uh, are you ashamed? How can I be ashamed when I look where he brought me from? You see, uh, you know, I, 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 can, I can look back and say, that's where I was, and that's not who I was, and what should have been, could have been, and ought to have been didn't happen, and I'm still alive. The bullets didn't hit. The drugs didn't stick. The alcohol didn't stick. None of that stuff stayed. Listen. Listen, I flew in. I'm not going to tell you my whole testimony on this because, uh, you know, it is live. But uh, not because I'm lying, but because I don't want anybody to hold it against me. Um, now, listen, what I'm trying to tell you is I, I, I flew in one way from California here. Flew in one way. Amen. Got saved one night. Flew back a different person and have never went back to the behaviors. Come on. I never went back to the bottle. I never went back to the drugs. Come on, I had to leave all them little, them little uh, girls alone. Young brothers who think you can't. You understand? One night, it didn't take, I didn't have to be rooted and grounded and, and all that. It, one night when he changed me, it was a permanent change. Can I help you right now? Come on. We get, we get, no, I can't tell that. If I tell, I tell my man that. No. Oh. Oh. No, I need to let people know. No, God brought me from somewhere. When you saved, if you saved as long as I am, people just think you always saved. You're a pastor. You've always been godly. <laughs> Thank the Lord that that old man's dead and you don't see him no more. All right. I don't want, I don't want to belabor the time because I've got, a, I, we, we haven't gotten any further than we got last week. <laughs> and the Bible says how shall they preach except they be sent huh as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things 2 Timothy 4 and 5 but watch thou in all things endure affliction do the work of an evangelist make full proof of thy ministry who is he talking to the church now watch this 
But watch thou in all things endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist. Now, I understand, you know, I, I grew up, my saved portion of my life, because I, I grew up when I got saved, which was in my mid 20s. Um, every, any, any female that wanted to preach was automatically an evangelist. Now, they didn't evangelize a jack. Unless they could sing, they could sing, they were evangelists. And if they were a woman and they preached, they were evangelists. Now, the work of evangelists means you out there spreading this word everywhere, not just preaching in somebody's church. Can I help somebody? Now, I'm not offending nobody. Please don't get offended by what I said. I'm just telling you that's just the way it was. Right? Now, some of them, some of them were, were, were powerful preachers. You know what I'm saying? They could preach. You understand? But they weren't doing no street ministries. Now, some were. I'm not, I'm not blanking in the whole thing, but it was, just, it was just an automatic title. What I'm telling you is God called us all to do the work of evangelists and to make full proof of our ministry. Now, what does that mean? Make full proof. Do everything I can do to make sure I fulfill that portion of my ministry. Now, how many of y'all doing that now? How many are doing that now? I'm doing everything I can to make sure that when God comes back and he says, did you do, did you do the work of evangelist? Or are you going to make me angry? Does your apathy make me angry? I better get to, you know, we haven't even got to the, to the principle, have we? Principle number 16, just in case you didn't know by now, soul winning. All right, principle number 16, soul winning. All right, now I'm going to get into the part that you guys probably remember the most from the last lesson, right? Get into this real quick. The three steps of soul winning, all right? Follow up, which means connect, right? Follow up means connect. We should have that on the screen. There it is. Follow up, connect. Maintenance of contact with or reexamination of a person. Contact, that is your first step. That means talking to somebody, evangelizing somebody. Going out and preaching the gospel, living the gospel before them, but also talking to them about God. This, uh, the second one is, I mean, uh, excuse me, I, I went ahead of myself. Outreach was the first one. I'm sorry, that's go. My bad. I jumped ahead of myself. Outreach, go. Number one, go. To go, to go out, to go too far, to go do what needs to be done. That's your first step, all right? That is when you're, first of all, you're not going to win them with your house shoes on and your robe on eating a bowl of popcorn in your house thinking about going out. Okay? Go. You're not going to reach them sitting at the buffet. Everything's about food because I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and they're on the other side of the buffet and you're not, and you see them and you say, ooh, they, 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 I really feel that I need to tell them about God. And if you don't get up and go, it's not going to happen. Follow up is to connect. I'm sorry. Follow up was the second one. Connect. That means after you go, you talk to them, you connect with them. You do what it takes to connect with them to become their friends. Right? Because in order to gain a friend, you must first show yourself friendly. Bottom line. Okay? You need to do those things. Connect. Discipleship. I'm going through this relatively fast because we covered some of this. Discipleship, which is the third step. And the final step is to teach. That's the one that doesn't end. And how often should we do these? You should always be going out. You should always be outreaching. You should always be doing follow-up. You should always do discipleship. If you're a leader in this church or you're over a department, you have been ordered to replace yourself, to find your replacement. And you're just looking at the pew next to you. It may not be there. It may be somebody out there. Okay, so you constantly have to do, keep doing follow-up. How many phones does it take to be hung up on you before you stop? How many times do you have to be cursed out before you stop? How many doors does it take to be slammed in your face before you stop? Right? None. It doesn't matter. Because they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting the gospel. It doesn't matter how many. Because if that was the case, then Jesus would have said, I'm not going to take that last step to the cross. That just ain't happening. You understand? But he took it all the way to the end. We don't want to make, we want to make sure to do that. 1 Corinthians 9, 16. I'm going to let y'all go in about 10 minutes, okay? 
1 Corinthians 9, 16, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not what the gospel. Is that what the scripture says? Come on, let's roll. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. If I do it willingly, I have a reward. Now, I'm going to ask you right now, because we're talking about soul winning. How many, I asked you before, how many are soul winners? And some of y'all raised your hand, some didn't. You all are. I'm not going to ask you again. I'm going to tell you, you're all soul winners. Now, how many of you are going to willingly go and win souls versus me having to come and say, have you talked to somebody about Jesus today? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I see some hands up. That's fine. You don't have to raise your hands. I wasn't requesting that or requiring that. But I see some of y'all bowing your head like, mm -hmm. Somebody else's ministry. I don't feel that well. Go ahead and pack your grip. And that's an old saying for your bag. And get your uh, fire suit together. <laughs> I'm just saying. And make sure you pack a lot of water. All right. For if I do these things willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, I... Way what dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me 18 let's go what is my reward then verily that when I preach the gospel I may make the gospel of Christ without charge that I abuse not my power in the gospel I don't do it for my sake I do it for God's sake for though I be free from all men yet have I made myself servant unto all look at your neighbor and say I'm your servant now look at your other neighbor and say I'm your servant all right, now don't y'all dare try to trip in here and come in here and talk about pick up my paper, servant. Nah, y'all. There'll be some furniture moving going on up in this. <laughs> but I'm your servant. That means that, that, that I, I, it is my job, it's my duty. It is my duty to make sure that you know the gospel. Yes, right? In class or wherever you're sitting, on the bus, at your job, wherever, it is your duty. You are the servant of that person to make sure you serve them the gospel. Is that all right? Yes. For though I am free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. Come on. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law. Come on. We talked about this last week. To them that are without the law is without the law being not without the law to God but under the law to Christ that I might gain them that are without the law. Gentile or Jew. Doesn't matter. I'm going to win them. That's my job, right? To the weak became I as weak that I might gain. Now, please watch this. It never says to the sinner I became as a sinner, right? Please stop thinking that you're going to go into the bar, sit down, and pull up a seat. Give me a club soda. I'm going to testify and her and shut this. You keep hanging out there. You're going to be sipping something that ain't club soda. I'm trying to help you. To the weak became I weak that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men that I might buy. All means save some. Come on. 22 is it. Nope, 23. There we go. And this I do for the gospel's sake that I might be partakers thereof. What? With you. All right. Where did I tell you? We got two more minutes, I think, or something like that. I don't know. I might have made it up. Matthew 4, 19. <laughs> And he saith unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. We talked about this in depth, didn't we? I'm going to make you fishers of what? Men. How am I going to do that? Right? I'm going to change your character. Right? You're no longer going to be fishing for some catfish. Right? You ain't going to try to be reeling in them big hybrid bluegill and crappie. And depending on what part of the country you're in, they're either crappie or crappie, however you pronounce it. Right, you're not going to be trying to do that, Sauger. You're not trying to. Win. I'm, I just lost some people up in here, didn't I? No, oh, Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I, do, I, I don't do. I don't do that. That little goldfish that everybody be trying to get. I don't understand that. Uh, I forget carp. Yes, I don't do carp, and I and I don't and I don't do drum. And in case y'all try to bring me some, I don't do that, and I and I don't do buffalo. Big dinosaur bones. I know. I just, I, I just, I just don't. I'm saying. All right. Um, food. I told you I'm hungry. I'm gonna make you fishers of men. I'm gonna change your. I'm gonna change your profession. You're no longer going to be a fisherman trying to, a fish, but now your job, your profession, is now that you reach out and find men. Right? You reel men in. All right. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on, 
from thence he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee and John and his brother in the ship with Zebedee their father mending their nets and he called them and they immediately left. In Luke, we're not going to read it all, but you can write it down. Luke 5, 8 through 11. I'm not going to read it all because this is after the resurrection. The one was before when he was first building his ministry. In Luke is when he found Peter and those that went back into the world after the crucifixion. Y'all follow me? Y'all write it down. It's going to be Luke 5, 8 through 11. Y'all write it down. And when he did, he talked to them. And he told them to cast their nets down. They cast their nets down. They reeled back in all these fish. And he says, come on, fear not. From henceforth thou shalt catch men. He reminds them. Can I remind somebody tonight? That when you first got saved, you had zeal, but not according to knowledge. You've been here for a while. Don't just gain knowledge and lose your zeal. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> you need them both, right? You need them both. Let us stand. I still didn't get done, but let us stand. I'm your servant. Lord, I am your servant. Lord, I am your servant. And because I'm your servant, I serve at your pleasure. This world doesn't belong to me. These people don't belong to me. They belong to you. And if you told me to go, then I must go. If you told me to preach the gospel, then I must preach the gospel. If you told me to live before man holy, I must live before man holy. For you have told us and shown us, Lord, in your word that there's only one way for salvation. Repentance and the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins and the infillment of the Holy Ghost. God, I thank you for that. I thank you for that. And Lord, let me never wander or veer off course. I pray for this body right here that's fitly joined together, God. To let them know, dear Lord, that they're preachers extraordinaire. That they're to proclaim the gospel everywhere they go. In kindness in love and in affection. God, when they're talking to clerks at the stores, dear God, even when they're being rude, we won't be rude, God. At restaurants, Lord, when the service is poor, we won't be rude, Lord. I'm praying, Lord, when family members are tripping and think people are talking crazy, God, we won't be rude, Lord. For we're proclaiming your gospel. Everywhere we go, we represent you. We know what the world does, Lord. But we're not going to be partakers. We give you the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Be here Sunday early as you can. Um, I mean, don't get here at 2 o'clock in the morning.